If you've been anywhere on the internet recently, the name Sweet Baby Inc. has probably come across your Twitter timeline or X timeline. I'm calling it Twitter. I don't care. Your Facebook feed, Instagram, no matter where you look, video game websites are talking about it. And it's become a big topic. And maybe like me, you had no idea what any of these people were talking about. Who Who is Sweet Baby Inc.? I've never heard of this company before. Why are they catching so much heat? Well, over the past few days, it's been a bit of an ongoing story. And I really didn't know if I was going to talk about it or not. I actually watched a video from Oh No, It's Alex. I'll have a link to it in the description box down below. And after watching his video, I kind of got a better idea about things. And then I did some of my own research. And I was like, yeah, I need to talk about this probably. And I'm probably going to burn some bridges with industry friends because unfortunately I have to call some of them out but hey if you want to end a friendship with me over my opinion on a subject matter that really has no bearing on my life or your life then so be it I've burned bridges before I will continue to burn bridges because I'm a fire starter twisted fire starter but who is sweet baby ink and why are people talking about them well what did Sweet Baby Inc. do? Their About Us section reads, Founded in 2018, Sweet Baby Inc. is a narrative development and consultation studio based in Montreal and working around the globe. Our mission is to tell better, more empathetic stories while diversifying and enriching the video games industry. Because if there's one thing that people just love, people just love, it's forced diversity. Now, talking about something like diversity usually ends up spiraling into a political conversation, which I just find absolutely bizarre. But my thing is, I think a vast majority, and I can't speak for everyone, but I feel like a vast majority of people, they don't necessarily care about a character's sexuality. They don't care about a character's race. They don't care about a character's gender. They care that the character is like, someone that they can either relate to or someone that is well written i mean homosexual characters and bisexual characters and stuff like that that's been around for a very long time I mean, you can go back to fear effect on the playstation one the lead character was a, a lesbian but a, or she was bisexual or a lesbian i can't remember off the top of my head but nobody was focused on that because it didn't really matter in the grand scheme of things people were interested in the gameplay and the story being told within the game, if the character is of a certain gender or race or something like that, yeah, there's going to be a small amount of people that are like, oh, I'm not going to play that. I don't want any, any women folk in my game. But most people don't actually care about that. They care about the forced stuff, the stuff that doesn't necessarily make sense, retconning of characters and stuff like that. Just stuff that, that doesn't make, like making Obi-Wan Kenobi in his teenage years, you know, by curious. Nobody gives a shit what obi-wan kenobi wants to who obi-wan kenobi wants to sleep with nobody cares it's never been talked about because it's not important to the story but as time goes along these people come along and they feel like they have to do something they have to change something for the betterment of everyone when in actuality nobody really asked for this you're speaking for somebody else and not allowing that person to speak you're telling that person what they want to say whether or not they want to say it or not so you know let's take a look at what the the co-founder of sweet baby inc had to say about implementing the these new these new ideas and philosophies into video games so i'm gonna pull this up right here and uh let's take a little listen here so you can see here the co-founder of sweet baby inc kim belair proudly explains the methods she uses to force bosses at game studios to censor alter and diversify games projects which she feels are problematic terrify them um if you're a creative working in AAA, which i did for many many years um put this stuff up to your higher ups and if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want. Uh this, this is not normal behavior. What, what world? What world do we live? Is this, is this the, the mafioso world? Where you, 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 go, you know, go shake that guy down. This is like this is insane to me. How do you say this on, on a podium, on a platform in front of people and basically say, hey, you know what? If the company's making a game that you feel isn't isn't you know good enough or doesn't have enough of this quota or that quota, you need to terrify the marketing team and tell them, yeah, what are you? This, it's, it's, it's so 
it's so childish. It is ridiculously childish. And when you look at the games that Sweet Baby Inc. has done or been involved with or been on the consulting team, first and foremost, if you are a video game developer and you need to hire an outside consultant to, to spice up your game with enough, you know, stereotypes or or different races of people or different sexualities of people or, or this, that or the other, like that says more about you than anything else like you couldn't write a story that included everyone that's okay though because not every story has to be about every type of person in the world there's certain stories to be told that don't involve you know a certain section of people you know if i'm watching an nba movie there's probably not going to be a lot of women in that because it's men that play play in the nba you know if i'm watching a movie about senegal there's probably not going to be a lot of white dudes in that because it's Senegal. It's not it's not where there's like a lot of white people. Like I don't get why every story has to be something to everyone. You know, every other form of media isn't really like that or wasn't really like that. But still, you know, I still feel like, you know, for the most part, they you know, uh, some movies do a decent job, but even, you know, stuff like this, but why do you have to hire and now, is, is this why video games cost so much to make? Because you look at the list of games and there's some AAA stuff in here. Like God of War Ragnarok, is is that why, you know, did you work on the relationship between the son and the father? Which, you know, some people it resonated with, me not so much. Spider-Man 2 was one of the games they worked on. You can look into that. And, you know, there's a side mission that kind of raises a few eyebrows. You know, it's fine. It felt a little bit forced and a little bit out of place. And I'm not sure that people you know were looking for that in the game but maybe they found some semblance of peace with it maybe they found something with it it doesn't matter that was that was still a really good game you know some cringy writing but i don't necessarily think that's the result of sweet baby ink but when you look deeper into sweet baby ink things just kind of get a little bit weird here so we could see here this was an article done by niche gamer and this is something that alex referenced in his video like i said go check it out in the comments section down below um, basically saying, you know, that Sweet Baby employees incite a harassment campaign against a Steam curator. Basically, a Steam curator was just listing what games Sweet Baby Inc. were involved with on Steam. All of this information was available on Sweet Baby Inc.'s own website to begin with. So none of this was like controversial. He wasn't like digging into anything. He literally just saw the games they listed and made a curated list. And then they want to like, um, like take this person down, report the group, false flag the group because he, he listed s some games. And then you, you, you dox his thing here. We could see here, this is another employee of Sweet Baby Inc. who we will get back to Mr. Felix at home in just a moment. Don't you worry. But like, just what is this? Like, this is not only morally wrong, but it's against the code of conduct. Like, you're not allowed to false flag people because they listed a bunch of games on your website. And right now, your website is coming under scrutiny. Like, absolutely ridiculous behavior. But when you look at what the head of the company said, you know, we're going to threaten these people. Like, if somebody threatened me, I'd be like, get out of my office. Like, get out of my building. What is wrong with you? But then you kind of understand why there is that hesitation because they have these people that are essentially like i don't know if you would call it brainwashed but they're definitely like of this mentality and we'll get into that in just a moment as well but then yesterday or at least yesterday at the time of the filming of this video we have this lovely article from kotaku sweet baby inc doesn't do what some gamers thinks it does no one company isn't forcing diversity into all your favorite games now this was done by a lady named Alyssa Mercante. i hope i'm saying that name right basically covering some of the games alan wake 2 god of war ragnarok suicide squad there's a a detected to dedicated to their game she like infiltrated their discord and she felt that it was a whole sort of nothing burger even in face of all of these stuff that was proven within what people are saying which i will be bringing up some receipts in just a second i've already shown you a receipt of the head of the company essentially you know threatening telling people to threaten to bully these these companies into giving into their demands like like you're somebody important like you're not 
you're in the freaking video game sphere. But this person basically just, they kind of went undercover and they shared some DMs with people. And then none of this is happening. It's just happening because the studio wants to connect them with a consultant who could bring a little bit of authenticity. Like, why? Is this something that happens in any other sector of, of the world? Because I, I'm sure if you, I'm sure Japanese studios, they would just laugh you out of the building. Like, hey, we want to consult you to make your game more diverse. That is literally grifting. That is literally pandering. That is literally forced diversity. Some of my favorite characters are of other races and, and sexes and genders and stuff like that. Like, all that sort of stuff. I don't care as long as they're well-written and they're cool characters or characters that hit with me or characters I think actually add to the story of the game. A vast majority of people do not care. You don't need to hire a company. I want to get in on this grift so bad. Because the fact that like that people buy into this, and we'll get into the buy into it part in just a second, but the fact that people buy into this is just insane to me. It, it's absolutely insane to me. And the problem is it comes into the parroting. But I did say we would return to one of the employees and one of the things that the employee said themselves. Now, I actually cannot show you everything that this person, who is a person that works with um, uh, Sweet Baby Inc., he works for the company, I actually cannot show you what they actually said. That's how bad these words are. One of them is a hard R. This is Mr. Felix at home. Oh, let me think of how I can do this. I can move my camera here. Let me just be very, very quick. Um, this is Mr. Felix at home, who is now consulting for Sweet Baby Inc. Now, I am part Jewish, so, um, you know, I also don't care, but I didn't find out I was Jewish until some sort of thing. But, hey, that's that's kind of, you know, something bad to say. Hey, that's kind of something bad. I'm going to have to censor this anyways. And, like, yeah, okay. 20, 2009, you know, yeah, RGT probably said some stuff like that. RGT probably said some some things that in modern context are no longer things that are deemed accessible or acceptable, I should say, by society. But I also don't work for a company who acts holier than thou on their high horse saying, like, you know, we're better than you and you need to add that. Like, look at this word here. That's all I'm going to put. That is literally all I'm going to put. And you're supposed to be the moral authority. You are a part of a company that is adding in diversity. You see the problem with this? You see, I was so mad I did the wrong transition. You see the problem with this is what do I always say? What do I always say? In the very, very few times I talk about this stuff, the problem is the people involved have some sort of guilt within them. They have some sort of internal struggle. Maybe they were a bad kid. You know, maybe they were a, a bad person. You know, they were racist and something like that, or they grew up in a racist household or something like that. So instead of realizing, hey, I've bettered myself since then, they instead try to go to the opposite end of the world. And they're like, I have to make up for all this stuff. I literally showed you stuff about different ethnicities, different sexualities, and against Jewish people. And like this person works at, at Sweet Baby Inc., and you have all of these video game journalists coming out in defense of Sweet Baby Inc. Like, yeah, it's a conspiracy. It's like, how can you say it's a conspiracy when I could see what the, what the leader of the company said during a thing? How can it be a conspiracy when there's literally proof of the company harassing someone for making a list of what games they've made and putting it on Steam? How can you justify the terminology used by this individual and then this individual wants to act on their high horse. One thing I would like to sort of close this video on is that person who did the Kotaku article. Um, she actually was on Twitter right after the article went live. And people were, of course, pushing back on it a little bit. Like, hey, you know, this is kind of biased reporting, this, that, or the other. And she made an interesting tweet saying something along the lines of, you cannot be racist to white people. And when somebody says that, when somebody says something like that, I feel like everything, everything they say from then on out, or even before they said that, it's just null 
and void. It, 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 it defies logic because if you look up the, the meaning of racism here, let's, let's, let's get it straight from Oxford. Prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism, I can't read that word, by an individual community or institution against a person or people based on the membership in a particular race or ethnic group, one typically one that is minority or marginalized. Yes, it is typically marginally or a, a minority group that is racist, that gets you know the brunt of racism. But have you ever been like a white kid at an all-black school? Because I have. And I'm not going to sit here and give you some sob story. No, not at all. I had a, a good time. I was there for like a half a, a, half a school year. Um, it was my seventh grade year. And it was, a, it was a school in Raleigh, North Carolina that was predominantly black. During the morning announcements, they would play Mo Money, Mo Problems. And everyone would be dancing on their desks and stuff like that. And like they would say some messed up stuff to me, but I would just laugh at it. And I never knew if they were serious or not. You know, hey white boy, you should be shouldn't be doing that in this class. You, hey, white boy, don't be walking around here. Stuff like that. I didn't care. You know, I would just laugh at it. But I feel like a lot of these people don't realize that racism is about a race. A person of a race not liking another person because of the color of their skin. Something absolutely ridiculous. In, in the overall context of things. But if someone who's Asian doesn't like someone who's black, okay, they're probably racist. If someone who's Asian doesn't like someone who's white, okay, they're, they're racist against white people. Like, why is this such a hard concept? Like, yes, generally speaking, it is against marginalized or minority people. But that's generally speaking. It does exist within the grand scheme of things. I don't know why I have to teach people basic terminology for the English language. And I know that this video has gone off the rails. I get it. But just things like this. And the fact that people will will, will support them. And the, the freaking gaming journalists. Gaming journal. Look at me. Gaming journalism is a cult. You could trace things back to people from Gamergate. From the Sweet Baby Ink stuff. I didn't even scratch the surface with any of that stuff. But gaming journalism is a cult. It's the same people making the same sort of statements. I almost think there's like a group chat. With like major players within games journalism. Where they all sort of figure out what their stance is going to be on something. And whether or not you know they need to chime in on it. Because they all say the same thing. They all think the same way. That's a cult to me. That's a cult to me. You know, I don't surround myself with people who are who who all think the same, who all have the same mentality, because that's ridiculous to me. That's absolutely ridiculous. I want people to disagree with me. I want people to call me out on my BS. I want people to do things like that, because that's what life is about. That's how you're supposed to be in life. Force diversity from people who say horrible things and companies pay them. Because they're scared that they're gonna that they're gonna freaking what are you gonna do? You're gonna you're gonna blacklist my game because I didn't hire you and I didn't do all the things you told me to do. Most people, to bring this all back, most people don't don't care about yes, there are people that are sexist. Yes, there are people that are racist. It's been like that since the dawn of time. Unfortunately, it'll always be like that. You can't you you can't get a neighborhood to agree on something. You want to change the whole freaking world and just rid it of biases and stuff like that. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. So you don't worry about those people. You worry about the normal people, the people who actually live in the real world, who deal with people of every sexual orientation, of every gender, of every race and stuff like that on a daily basis. And when they see them, they say, hey, what's up, man? You know, basic human decency. And to sit there and make a grift out of it to terrorize people when your own company has employees harassing people and saying horrible stuff. And you wonder why people are mad at you. You wonder why. And man, I don't even know how the hell I'm going to edit this video. I don't even, it might just be me looking at the camera the whole time and then just showing stuff on the screen because. I don't know. This, this whole situation is just insane to me. It's insane to me. It's insane. It's like, have you ever had a friend in real life? Not an internet friend, but like a friend in real life of a different race, of a different 
you know, a gender of a di- like, did you just grow up in like a sheltered neighborhood and you were homeschooled? Like, bro, I made my mom, <laughs> my mom, I used to pick up uh, Elijah on in high school, senior, our senior year. He wrecked his car. It was a little messed up. So I used to pick him up because it was on the way to school. And one day I skipped school and I was like, Ma, I'm not going to school, but you got to pick up Lodge. She was like, what? And I was like, yeah, you got to pick up Lodge. And so like my little white mom driving around with my friend Elijah on, dropping him off at school. He was like, hey, your mom's I was like, shut up. Shut up, Lodge. But like, I, I just, I don't get it. Where who, who raised these people? Where did these people come from? It's insane. Oh, boy, I'm going to get in trouble for this video. Subscribe if you're new. Goodbye.